Hi and welcome to this read class on arrays in Raptor. This is a recap of session 9 in Computers and Technology 11. In this session we covered setting up arrays inside of Raptor. We also covered why you want to use arrays, how to create arrays in Raptor, what indexes are, what iterators are, and how to do operations with uh, some of the information in arrays. First thing we'll go over here is the uses of arrays. Uh, arrays are generally used to store information of the same data type that needs to be sorted or needs to be gone through step by step, uh, needs to be searched through, or needs to have the same operation done on everything inside of the array. It's also a way to have dynamic variables. So that you don't have to set static amounts of variables. And if you need more than one variable, uh, and you know you're going to need more than one, but you don't know exactly how many, then that's what you can use arrays for. Creating arrays in Raptor uh, is using the square brackets on the, the keyboards inside of the computer lab. They are the apostrophe and the asterisk key directly to the right of the P key. Okay, and now we'll go to Raptor and make the array that we made in class and the small program using arrays that we did in class. The example inside of class that we used was a simple program which used an array and two loops to store grades for, uh, I guess, semester or something like that and then go through another loop and add them all together and to export or output the result the average uh, now normally you would not use loops in an array to do this in much simpler ways but it was an example of how to create an array and ways you can use an array and also the power of arrays because again like I said it is uh, dynamic you don't have to have a set number of uh, variables that you're going to use you can create them on the fly as your program is running okay so what we did first is we used uh, a while loop and the while loop first had some kind of question that asked the user do you want to enter grades to average now We stored this in user choice and inside of the loop we simply compare user choice with the string yes to see if they are equal if they are equal then we continue the loop so that means at some point inside of the loop we need to create some way to exit the loop and we'll overwrite whatever you enter or whatever that user enters here to be able to break out of the loop. We'll also create an input here. Say enter the grade and then we're going to store that inside an array called grades. Now this array must have an index and if we set it at 1 that means every time the loop runs it will set the input to uh, the 
one index of this array, and that's not going to work. So what we need to do is also make what's known as an iterator. You can think of it as a way to count how many times a loop has run. So we'll count, call this count, and we'll set it equal to zero initially. We can logically think of it as being zero. Let me check something here. All right. We can think of it as zero at this point because it has never went through the loop. But then we can say at the first time it runs through the loop that we set to equal to whatever it was previously plus one. So it adds one to itself each time. All right, so that means that we can use this variable count to actually say which index that we're going to store this information in each time this runs. All right, so if we run it now, do I want to enter each grade? Sure, sounds good. First grade, I'll enter is 100. Yes, I'll add another one. I'll add 80. Do I want to add another one? No. And I can see here that it's working just fine. I create the grades array. The first index is 100. The second index is 80. Okay, so the second loop we're going to add needs to have iteration as well. So we're going to use count again. So we're going to reset count at the beginning and set it back equal to zero inside of the loop. We're going to say count equals count plus one again. And instead of using username to exit the loop, we're going to compare count and the length of the array. If the array is 3 and count is 0, then we need to keep doing the loop. So let's type that. So let's say length of the array grades. If it is equal to count, all right, now think about that for a second. If length of grades, three, is equal to count, let's say zero, we continue to run the loop. But when we first get down here, the opposite logic is what we need. We need to say, well, if length of grades and count are not equal, we keep running the loop. Because if length of grades, 3, is equal to count, 3, that means that we have run the, the, the loop the amount of times that we need to. Okay. But in this case, length of grades being 3 and count being 3 would be the only reason this would run. So what we actually need to do is say, well, if length of grades is not equal to count yet, so if count's not equal to the amount of grades that are in the array, run the loop. Okay? All right, so then finally, we output whatever the, well, yeah, I forgot a part. We need to make a new variable, and we'll call it total. This will be a run, running total of all of the grades. All right, so we go inside and we say total is equal to whatever total was previously plus grades and whatever is in the count index of this array. Okay, so right here it's zero. Let's say we enter 100. So in the one, so the first time we go through here, count zero equals count zero plus one, so count is now one. Total zero equals total zero plus grades, whatever's at the first index, which is set up here. So we say the well, first time we enter 100. So 100 gets added to total, so now total is 100. Goes around again, so the length of grades is actually two. Count is right here was one. So if length of grades is not equal to count, so if one here, one, is not equal to the length of grades,
grades 2, that's true. Okay, so the length of grades 2 is not equal to 1. That is true. So we run the yes section or the true section of the, the loop again. Immediately we set count equal to 2. And we say total 100 equals total 100 plus grades 2, which is 80. So total is now equal to 180. Count is equal to 2. Goes around again. Is length of grades 2 not equal to count 2? No, that's false because they're equal now. So we go to the no branch. Then we will, to get the average, we just simply say total divided by length of grades. And that's it. All right, if we run this, so do you want to enter some grades? Yes, enter the grade, 100. Let's enter another one, we've got a 90. Let's enter an 85. And let's say I got a 76. I've got another 90, and an 85. And I had a bad day, so I've got a 40, and that's fine. My average is an 80.8, .8, so an 81. Here I can see all of the numbers that I entered. So instead of having one variable for each of these and therefore being limited by the amount of information I could enter, an array is dynamic and it changes however much I need it to. All right, so that's a reclass of what we went over last in class. If you didn't understand it then, I hope you understand it better now. If you missed the class then, I hope that this is a good recap for you of what you missed. Have a good night. I'll see you in class.